Today I am going to tell you about a case that happened in a town in Costa Rica called Punta Arenas, a place that is chosen by thousands of people to spend their vacations on the beautiful beaches that this place offers. Costa Rica is a very popular tourist destination, but unfortunately there was no happy ending in this story. On July 18, 2020, Maria Luisa Sedino arrived at the La Mansion and Hotel in Manuel Antonio, located in the Costa Rican province of Punta Arenas. She arrived in the company of her pet dog named Mofalda, a small dog that accompanied her everywhere and whom she treated as her daughter. On the first day nothing unusual happened. Maria Luisa went to the beach, ate lunch at a restaurant, drank some alcohol, all the things vacationers usually do. But the next day everything changed. At exactly 16.30 Maria Luisa asked for a bottle of wine, mineral water and two glasses to be brought to her room. It is worth noting that the woman did not tell anyone that she was going to go with someone, and everyone around her was sure that she needed to rest alone. Throughout the afternoon and evening, no movement was recorded from her room. The next day, July 20th, hotel staff tried to contact her but received no responses. A member of staff had previously spoken to Maria Luisa and she told him that she was living alone as she had recently split up with her partner, that she was not well, and that she was only traveling with her small dog Mofelda. As it had been several months since the pandemic had officially started, the woman said it had also affected her mental health, which was deteriorating. Considering everything she had been through in her life, she needed a vacation. So the hotel staff decided to enter the room to do a routine check just in case. The front door was locked from the inside. They then decided to see if there was access through the door that went out to the patio. This room had an emergency exit designed for guests with pets. They opened the patio door and the dog could go outside to relieve himself. When the hotel staff approached this exit, the door was half open. Once inside, they smelled a horrible odor and immediately saw bloodstains in various parts of the room. The dog was alive. He was lying in a corner, trembling with fear, and kept away from the hotel staff all the time apparently because it was either traumatized or very frightened. On the bed lay a motionless human figure wrapped in a sheet. This was how the lifeless body of Maria Luisa Sidneo had been discovered. Mary Louise Sidneo was an anesthesiologist and was an extremely respected specialist in her field. She was 43 years old at the time of her death and worked as the head of the Department of Anesthesiology and Rehabilitation at Sima Hospital in Escasu. She was much loved by her colleagues, and during the first part of the Mary Louise pandemic, she was very dedicated to her profession and wanted to help patients during those difficult times. The woman, being a medical professional, helped her loved ones a lot in this matter. She arranged health insurance, helped with medical appointments, and was sort of the right hand of the Sidneo family. When she could help with anything, she was always there for them. Her parents lived in Fortuna de San Carlos, so it wasn't always possible to be with her family all the time. Friends described Maria Luisa as a strong, intelligent, likable woman who loved to travel both in Costa Rica and abroad. Her reputation was truly impeccable. When news of her violent death reached Costa Rica and her own family, the aftermath was devastating. Who would want to kill someone like Maria Luisa? The mysteries of this case began from the first minute the staff discovered the lifeless body. The crime scene was disconcerting, not only because of the brutality encountered by Maria Luisa, but also because of the intrigue that began the moment she accessed the room she had rented at this hotel. Let's move on to the details discovered in this case. A third hotel room in Costa Rica. First, let's talk about access. This hotel, like most hotels around the world, keeps a record of the magnetic keys used in the rooms. In other words, every time someone enters the room, the card used is recorded and the code of the key used is known. In this way, it would be possible to know whether it was a customer or an employee of the hotel. In this case, in the Maria Luisa murder case, there was no record of access by keys that did not belong to the woman. It only transpired that she had entered her room the night before and no one else had entered. Obviously, since there was a sliding glass door at the back, someone could have entered through it. This door was always locked from the inside, so only the guest could open it and leave it unlocked. But because it was a sliding door, not equipped with a magnetic key system, there was no record of entry through the courtyard. It could have been that Maria Luisa let someone in through that door or left it unlocked and someone came in and killed her. It was the most logical version of events at the time. After the discovery of the body, the hotel staff called the police, who, in examining the scene, did not need to conduct a thorough analysis to establish that Maria Luisa Sidneo had indeed been murdered. Her body was completely damaged and it was obvious that she had been tortured and that the person who had done it was very angry. 
Forensic experts went to the scene to gather evidence, determine the manner of death, and analyze every detail in hopes of finding the culprit. It must be said that the level of brutality was so high that authorities recommended that the Sidneo family have a closed casket funeral. An autopsy conducted some time later revealed that the body had bites in several places and two fingernails were broken. This means that Maria Luisa was trying to defend herself. Another detail that came to light during the autopsy was that the killer had washed the body. In other words, after the murder, he carried Maria Luisa to the bathroom. According to the criminalist, the woman was killed in the bedroom on the bed, which is explained by the large amount of blood from there. This man took the body to the bathroom, washed it, then dried it, wrapped it in a sheet and placed it on the bed. It was in this way that the hotel staff later discovered the body of Maria Luisa. Although the killer had washed the body, perhaps in an attempt to get rid of the evidence and cover up the traces of the crime, it was almost impossible, as there was blood everywhere. It was on the floor, the walls, the curtains, and the bed. This made it even more certain that the attack was incredibly brutal. The experts took photographs and collected as much physical evidence as possible. The body was then submitted for autopsy, and police began interviewing hotel staff as well as guests, who may have heard something. From what was seen at the scene, Maria Luisa must have been screaming violently and her dog barking. However, no one reported screaming throughout the night. Although the hotel was nearly empty due to the pandemic, there were a few people working at the hotel and the owner of the hotel, Harry Bowden, who lived there with his husband Dano, was always present. He also allowed some trustees to live in the hotel because they were having financial problems. This was also because the hotel was never full during the pandemic, so renting out a room to friends was not a financial loss to him. A bottle of wine she had ordered from room service and two glasses were found in Maria Lewis's room. Later, an examination of the victim's cell phone revealed that she had sent a picture of the two glasses to a friend, but there was no mention in the message that she was with anyone or that she was waiting for someone in her room. She also sent an audio message to the same friend. Mido, you have to see how good this hotel is. Mofelda is the queen of this place. I mean, they treat us very well. I paid for the all-inclusive package, which is an extra $100, and they bring me drinks, they bring me everything, strawberries, pineapple, basically anything I want. And Mofelda brings different treats and water. You have no idea how awesome it is here, and I mean, I love it. I danced with the bartender, with another guy, with the owner's assistant. The owner, by the way, is Dutch, so it's super cool. Mita, I'm paying 155,000 colons a night, and on the all-inclusive, I can order dinner from anywhere I want and they'll bring it to me. This hotel, of course, is a little shabby. More accurately, it's kind of run down because it's understaffed. The same girl who serves coffee, she also takes care of the hotel grounds. But I still really like it here. It's a very cool place. Later, when officers interviewed Maria Lewis's friends and relatives to see if she had any apparent enemies, authorities learned that she always ordered two glasses, even when she was completely alone. This was so that alcohol could be poured into one glass and water into the other. Hence, this confirms that the woman was alone and not waiting for anyone. And here we return to the first hypothesis. The attacker must have been someone who saw Maria Luisa in the hotel, noticed that the back door was open, and attacked her. But at the same time, so much of the brutality seemed to come from someone who had an intense hatred for her, was intensely angry with her. And that was what was hard to explain. In situations like this, it seemed like it was a murder, committed entirely by someone who really knew the woman and really wanted to make her suffer. But at the same time, there was no evidence that Maria Luisa was with anyone, or that she was seeing anyone. Another detail from the autopsy confirmed that the woman had also been abused. In addition, she had signs of strangulation, marks of blows on her cheeks, lips, arms, and chest. As a result of their analysis, review of the autopsy results, interviews with family and friends, and people at the hotel, authorities concluded that the attack could not have been carried out by a single person because Maria Luisa was not heard screaming. They then speculated that there were at least two attackers, and that they had subdued her in such a way as to completely control her. There was even talk that there might have been a third person because the woman had been abused. According to this theory, two of the attackers held Maria Luisa down and a third person raped her. All of this is supported by the fact that when the body was analyzed, there were no signs of ropes or anything that would indicate that the victim was bound. The officers also speculated that the men probably stuffed something in the woman's mouth so that she couldn't scream, or so that the screams wouldn't be heard, and so that they could carry out the attack without anyone hearing anything. The cause of death was ruled to be head injury, which could have been caused in a number of ways. 
It could have been caused by a violent blow to the head. It could have been caused by being undressed as there was evidence of fractured vertebrae, and it could have been caused by being hit by an object or falling heavily to the floor. All in all, what the assailants did to Maria Luisa, sitting down, was an atrocity, something senseless and with no obvious motivation. It didn't take long to find the first suspect, and all because the body of this man, who was staying at the hotel, showed numerous fresh wounds that looked like scratches and blows inflicted by a man trying to defend himself. This is what was analyzed. It turned out to be Tor Ira Martinez, an exotic dancer who worked in the city's nightclubs and was staying at the hotel at the time of the murder. The man was placed in a holding cell while attempts were made to link him to the case. His footprints were compared with footprints found at the murder scene, and two of them matched the man's footprints, which were located in front of the bed in the bedroom on the black porcelain floor. Shortly thereafter, a second suspect, Luis Carlos Miranda was apprehended when a hotel security guard reported seeing him walking the hallways at night with the first suspect. Since Tora was arrested, Luis Carlos had to be questioned to see if there was any connection between him and the case. In addition, tests were conducted and it turned out that his dental records matched the bites found on Maria Luisa's body. According to some testimony of hotel employees, they saw Maria Luisa talking to Luis Carlos, and on one occasion to Herrera, but in a casual manner, not as if they were acquaintances or friends. They simply greeted each other and asked how they were doing. This may be due to the fact that there were very few guests in the hotel, so they may have passed each other several times. I mentioned earlier that the owner of the hotel allowed two friends to stay on his property because they were having financial problems and were in the midst of a pandemic. Now, Luis Carlos and Teodora Herrera were those friends. Seeing the matching footprints and bite marks of these two suspects, the most consistent action of the police was to question Harry Bodden, who, as I said, was the owner of this hotel. In the course of that questioning, he revealed that on the day that the murder occurred, which was the night of July 19, 2020, Harry and his husband were having dinner in their apartment inside the hotel with the two suspects. After dinner, the four men went to a private pool. Harry then revealed that the two suspects worked for him in exchange for him allowing them to live there. Luis Carlos was in charge of the website on the marketing side, and Herrera worked as a cook and bartender. The owners of the hotel and these suspects were not close friends, but when they started living in the hotel already a year before the murder, they began to meet more and more often, going out for dinner, lunch, and spending time together. Thus, a friendship developed between the four men. Although Harry Bowden cooperated by giving this interview in August 2020, he was arrested because two bites found on the victim's body also matched his dental records. And that's when the truth began to come out. The police confiscated the phones of all the detainees and found text messages between Luis Carlos and Harry Bowden, which were highly compromising. In these messages, Luis invited the hotel owner to have intimate relations with a woman while he was supposed to be watching. This correspondence occurred several days before the incident. The suspects claimed that the messages meant nothing and that they were just joking around. But that was enough for authorities, including physical evidence, to keep them in jail while they build a case. The only one who wasn't arrested was the hotel owner's husband because there was no evidence. There were no text messages, no fingerprints, and the bites did not match those found on the victim's body. The suspect's defense tried to argue that the evidence in the form of bites found on the body was inconclusive and that essentially none of them were involved in the murder. But despite this, the three men were charged with the murder of Maria Luisa Sidneo. Before the trial began, the lawyer for Harry Bowden, the hotel owner, asked that his client be released and placed under house arrest for two reasons. First, because there was a pandemic in the country and Harry was 69 years old and being in jail was risky. Second, he allegedly had difficulty walking due to recent knee surgery. According to the defense, the man had been walking with the aid of a cane for a long time, and when the trial began, he appeared in a wheelchair. Because of this request, he was placed on house arrest and was able to return to the hotel where he was staying. He couldn't leave the hotel, but he had everything he wanted while he waited for trial. He had a staff of servants, restaurants, and a swimming pool. On September 13, 2022, the public trial of the detainees began, at which the evidence against them was heard. It was then that the prosecution had difficulty proving the involvement of Harry Bodden and Luis Carlos. Recall that they were found to have text correspondence and allegedly bite marks on the victim's body. The problem was that the bites couldn't actually prove who committed the murder, they could only rule out suspects. So all the hotel employees could be ruled out, but these two couldn't. So it didn't mean that the bite was an exact match to the dental records, so it wasn't conclusive evidence. But as far as Theodore Herrera was concerned, he had the most evidence against him. 
there was a blood trail. There were also wounds on his body that were found to have been inflicted by Maria Luisa when she tried to defend herself, as his blood was found under the victim's fingernails. Blood was also found on his shoes, watch, and cell phone, which were in his room at the time of the search. Obviously, with this in mind, they were only able to convict Herrera, who received 50 years in prison, while Harry Bowden and Luis Carlos Miranda were acquitted for lack of physical evidence. Many believe that these two men were also involved in the murder because the hotel security cameras mysteriously stopped working on the day of the murder. This suggests that someone must have set this up and another person, a hotel security guard, was suspected. However, at the same time, he, as well as the other two individuals, could not be arrested due to lack of evidence. Strangely, he left for another country after the murder, although the police asked him to attend the trial as a witness. There are many more things about this case that make one think that there are more people involved. For example, two guests even told the police that the hotel had a power outage for many hours the night of the murder, and this may have been done intentionally. First, so that the security cameras wouldn't work, and second, so that the magnetic keys wouldn't work. Another strange detail is that the investigators searched the hotel owner's private office only nine days after the murder, which could have given him enough time to remove all the evidence. In addition to the text messages, the suspect's social media accounts were analyzed, and here conversations between them about some sort of fantasy were found that directly relate to how Maria Lewis's body was found. Obviously, from a legal standpoint, Harry Bodden and Luis Carlos Miranda are innocent and I am in no way accusing them. The only person in prison for this murder is Herrera, who is also awaiting a new trial to see if his sentence can be commuted. And although this case has been solved, the Sedino family believes that there is something else going on here. There is some kind of defense, some kind of cover-up. They said that the authorities handed them Maria Lewis's belongings drenched in blood and that they don't understand why this happened because they wanted to preserve this evidence in case something else was found. They are obviously satisfied with the verdict of Herrera, but not with the acquittal of Harry Bodden and Luis Carlos Miranda. I commend you for seeing this story through to the end. Please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss new stories.